Hi everyone, this tutorial is going to teach you a little bit about the basic motor controls and how you can use them. In this first example, I'm importing in our first motor, motor A. This motor creates a steady rotating force in any direction and can ideally be used for machine gears or for creating rotational force like with this wheel that I'm importing. I'll test out my motor first by pressing play so you can see what sort of rotation to expect. After that, I need to double click on the control panel to bring up my advanced options. Here I can select my wheel as a target for my motor. When I press the action button now though, the wheel will rotate the wrong way. This is because I need to ensure that the correct axis is selected in the advanced panel. If I take a look at my wheel's local axes, you can see that it's not the same as my motor. On my wheel, the red X axis is the one that I want to rotate around. So I'll go ahead and select that axis. Now you'll see the proper rotation on the tire. If I adjust the speed slider to a negative value, I can get my tire to rotate the opposite way as well. Okay, next up we have the drill motor, otherwise known as Motor B. To demonstrate this one, I'm going to bring in this roulette wheel. Notice that when I brought in my control, that a new control tile appeared on the top. I'll bring this down for now to align with my other control tile from my previous motor. The control panel for motor B is a little different in that it has an operate button, ensuring that the motor will not start until it is pressed, and you can adjust the speed and direction without automatically starting the motor. So let's enter the advanced options and select my roulette wheel as the target. It looks like the green Y axis is the correct axis for rotation, so I'll try that out first. Whoops, the roulette wheel is rotating the wrong way and crashes into the tire from the previous example. To fix this, I'm going to simply go up to the pivot point and change it to the middle of my prop. You'll see that when I do, that the rotation is now correct. Now I can change the speed and direction of my rotation and press operate to spin the wheel. Okay, next up is motor C or the stepper motor. This motor is useful for slower moving things like cranes or robotic arms. To demonstrate this, I'm going to use this airplane seat. So again, I'll click and drag my stepper motor in and reposition it so you can see the rotation clearly. Notice that there are two action buttons here for clockwise and counterclockwise rotation. When I press them, you can see that this motor is rather slow. I'll go into the advanced options and increase the unit value. This is similar to the speed value on the previous motors, and will simply increase the velocity that the motor rotates at. I can also toggle the auto retract option on, which will cause the motor to retract to its original position after the action button is released. Okay, you can notice in the content manager that my chair has three parts. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to delete the headset cover and just apply my control to the backrest. For this example, I'll select my sub prop as the target from the content manager to be more accurate. This is to make sure that only the sub prop is selected. Sometimes if you select from the stage, other subprops may also be selected and produce the wrong results. Once I do this and press the action button, you'll see that the rotation is good, only on the wrong axis. Again, I need to fix this by going into the advanced options panel and selecting the correct axis. I'll also lower the unit value and take off auto retract to show my final sample. Notice that the pivot point is at the base of the backrest which allows it to rotate around that point for the proper result. Okay, the final motor is called the swing motor. This is great for things like pendulums, windshield wipers, or other similar objects. You can see that when I press the action button here, that my motor simply rocks back and forth at a steady rhythm. If I go into the advanced options, one thing I can do is set a slight delay between movements like you see me doing here. Just like with motor A, I can also adjust the speed of the rotation as well, and the control will react in real time. To demonstrate this, I'm going to bring in this dismembered eye here. I'll resize it and reposition it a bit so you can see the results better. When I go into my advanced panel and select the eye as my target, then press the action button, you can see how it causes the eye to rock back and forth to 90 degrees on each side. If I take down my angle to 40 degrees in the advanced option panel and decrease my delay, you can see how my eye will move back and forth much quicker. 
Notice that the spring effect built into the eye is very apparent when I use this back and forth prop at a higher speed. So that's about it for basic motors. Feel free to experiment with them and combine them together to create your own cool machines.